Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Regaming to Dokkan video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out within 9700 and then 9900K. Specifically, the turbo frequencies for these chips have been revealed, along with other specifications, and we also have some further benchmark leaks for the 9600K and the 9700K as well. It's still going to be based on the Confolent architecture, but, of course, we see the Core count increased to 8 cores, 16 threads for the 9900K. Rather strangely, the i7 9700K and other SKUs are actually missing hyper-threading, which has led to a lot of questions of what Intel will actually be planning for the future. So the 9700K has 8 cores and 8 threads, as I just mentioned, it's missing hyper-threading, but will boost up to 4.9 GHz for single core operation. But the processor will operate at 4.6 gigahertz when all of the processor cores are in use. So that's still pretty darn good, 4.6 gigahertz for all eight cores, or eight physical cores. But what about the 9900K? Well, this is perhaps even more impressive, but will run up to uh, five gigahertz for both single and dual core use. But when it comes to all of the cores, we see clock speeds of up to 4.7 gigahertz. We also have leaks concerning the performance of these processors, specifically the i5-9600K and the i7-9700K. Now, of course, when it comes to the graphics performance, the two processors aren't that different. We're looking at just a few percent difference between the two SKUs, but when physics scores are taken into consideration, the 9700K is almost 37% faster than its uh, little brother. Of course, that does make sense, since the 9700K does indeed have an additional two physical cores there. So we have six physical cores versus eight physical cores. So what about the release date for these CPUs? Well, it looks like we're going to have a release date of the 1st of October, at least according to the rumours, where we will see not only the processors, but also the Z390 motherboards as well. Just a quick reminder, the uh, 9700K, 9900K, and so on, will certainly work in a current series board. You might, however, need to flash your BIOS first. So let's say for the sake of argument, you've got an 8600K and you want to plonk in a 9900K, just be sure you update your BIOS first, just in case you have any issues or your uh, BIOS does not support flashing without a CPU present. A couple of days ago, we also covered news of the Radeon Pro WX 8200 and now AMD are officially launching the card at SIGGRAPH. So what type of specifications and pricing are we looking at here? Of course this is a workstation card at the end of the day and will be a GPU which is slightly inferior to the performance of the WX9100. So the Radeon Pro WX8200 is for all intents and purposes a Vega 56 GPU but rather curiously does have one area it actually slightly beats the Radeon Pro WX9100 in. So we are looking at 56 compute units versus uh, 64 of the Radeon Pro WX9100, same number of ROPs, 64, the uh, boost clock remains the same at 1500 megahertz, and the memory bus whip is also the same at 2048 bit. However, the memory clock rather curiously is a little faster you're looking at 2.0 GBPS compared to 1.89 GBPS, but of course the uh, half precision performance is 21.5 versus 24.6, so of course the 8200 is slightly better there, and it does only feature half the amount of memory, only 8 gigabytes compared to 16 of the WX9100. So we're in this really weird position where at least if memory bandwidth is concerned, uh, tasks should slightly favor the 8200, but if you need a lot of uh, data stored on the GPU or things are really going to be uh, bombarding the compute units, then at least in theory, the 9100 should continue to remain on top. But what about pricing? The launch price of the 9100 was 2200 US dollars. This comes in as a professional card at 999 US dollars, which is a pretty darn good price for once again a workstation card. So nowadays it's about twice the price of the WX7100 and around 40% cheaper than the 9100. So 
Overall, this does fit rather nicely into the market. Of course, this is based on the 14nm Vega architecture that's not quite yet, uh, the Vega 7s yet. But even so, this card once again helps to solidify AMD's position in the market. What they're really trying to do, however, is undercut NVIDIA. If you were to look at the Quadro P5000, it's half the price of the Quadro. So once again, the 8200 in terms of price and performance actually really does well. The only thing is it's not necessarily aimed at CAD type of applications. Instead, it's more compute focused. But even so, NVIDIA have obviously left a slight gap in the market. AMD are very happy to plug it with this particular GPU. I am slightly curious though why AMD have decided to increase the memory clock for this particular card though. And that's just about it for this particular video. You're going to say, well, that was a short video for you, Paul. And indeed it is. So what's been going on? Well, it's quite simple. Uh, there's quite a few reviews that we're finishing off. Amy right now is in the middle of a field in a festival. Uh, so she's going to be returning tomorrow. But I have a couple of large projects that I'm working on, including DirectX 12 versus DirectX 11, a really comprehensive look. That should be up tomorrow, providing nothing explodes. Uh, I am just finishing the B450 motherboard review. That's almost finished. I've done all of the testing. So right now I'm looking into the 2600X overclocking. Uh, and there's also a PC that's all of the tests are done. I need to look at the monitor review, plus a few other bits and pieces. And there's also some other projects coming up very soon as well. So, as I said, slightly shorter day today because I'm working on scripts and doing other editing. But I just wanted to cover mostly the uh, ninth generation stuff because a couple of you had messaged me about it. So I figured uh, some of you probably want to know. Anyway, with all of that said, thanks very much for watching the video. Normal stuff. Um, like, share, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.